In 1853, in southern Netherlands, was born to a Dutch pastor, a boy destined to become a renowned painter, and a vastly troubled soul. In 2017, the NGV featured his work in what it called its Winter Masterpiece Exhibition, under director Tony Elwood. As a binding theme, the exhibition was entitled Seasons. Nature itself was a binding interest in this artist's life. But his life was far more complex than that. His anguished suffering brought his own perspective to the subjects before him, as he developed a quite unique post-impressionist style. His persecution by others and by himself brought about his early death. This was Vincent van Gogh. By the age of six, Vincent was already sketching, and through his school years at nine and eleven. But at sixteen years, Vincent was packed off to work when his strict father considered he was not applying himself and the family was in financial distress. At the age of 20, Vincent was posted to London. Vincent sent a flow of letters to his younger brother, Theo, containing his simple sketches. He had fallen in love with the British culture. Van Gogh's emotionally charged life saw him moving back to Europe, to Holland, to Paris. More contact with other painters saw him take up watercolour and then oils. His sketching and painting showed a increasing confidence and range of subjects. Through this period, Van Gogh's style could be described as traditional. His tone was largely dark and somber with little use of color. While his range continued to expand, he retained a strong social conscience. His connection to the quiet aspects of rural life remained strong. But his increasing awareness of other painters, of new movements in art, and of their use of colour, and in fact the Impressionist movement, had a strong impact on him. At the same time, his own traditional style developed, culminating in what is widely regarded as his first masterpiece. The continuing turbulence of his life developed an intense self-awareness and introspection. The opening up of Japan to the wider world in the early 1800s had created an intense awareness of Japan and its style and art throughout the world. The artistic impact was felt nowhere more than in Paris including on Van Gogh. He completed a number of works in the Japanese idiom following its colour, style and patterns. The strangeness and unfamiliarity, but also the simplicity of line, entered his life. By now, 
colour had become a dominant part of many of his works. His colour was blended with simple, accurate line work, often fine, confident and firm. But a new element was starting to gain a foothold. Van Gogh knew that he was mentally disturbed, but there was little he could do about it. He admitted himself to a mental institution, and from within its walls he painted from memory scenes that reassured him, scenes from his earlier life. At the age of 35, Van Gogh was lonely. He was disturbed. He was suffering psychotic episodes. The world around him became more unreal, more disturbing. He tried to represent it in his work and produced some of his most memorable paintings. His starry sky has been partnered with Edward Munch's Scream. He clung to normality and beauty. Yet his troubled mind seemed to keep a sense of humour. As if he could see what others could not. His own personal style had evolved. He used it to represent his memory of his rustic days. His brush with religion. Twisted and bent by his father's influence, as it might have been. But to the end, though tormented beyond help, Van Gogh kept a hopeful, beautiful outlook on life. By looking at his last six months of artistic output, it is interesting to speculate what may have been in Van Gogh's mind as he drew his life to a close. He seems to have reflected on many aspects of his life, on his childhood, on religion, and the many confusing and frightening influences he felt. It is perhaps too limiting to look upon the seasons as being the main influence in his life. This very personal view may open a few perspectives. Beyond what has been presented as a blockbuster exhibition for its first appearance in Australia under director Tony Elwood. <laughs>